Hello. How are you at the moment? I hope you are well and good. Welcome to this episode of the RKMCS Criminology Lecture Series. My name is Fire One Maxi. I am tasked to brief you shortly on the dangerous behavior of fire. Our topic is an important aspect of understanding fire, in order to effectively deal with it, whenever we are in a fire situation. My presentation will directly focus on the following. An introduction about the state of matter, chemistry of fire, then the behavior of fire such as backdraft, flash over, bite back, and flash fire. So, let's begin with an introduction. The state of matter. All matters exist of one of the three states, solid, liquid and gas or vapor. The atoms or molecules of a solid are packed closely together, and that of a liquid is packed loosely, while the molecules of a gas or vapor are not packed together at all, they are free to move about. In order for a substance to oxidize, its molecules must be pretty well surrounded by oxygen molecules. The molecules of solids or liquids are too tightly packed to be surrounded. Thus, only vapors can burn. However, when a solid or a liquid is heated, its molecules move about rapidly. If enough heat is applied, some molecules break away from the surface to form a vapor just above the substance. This vapor can now mix with oxygen. If there is enough heat to raise the vapor to its ignition temperature, and if there is enough oxygen present, the vapor will oxidize rapidly. Meaning, it will start to burn. The start of burning is the start of a chain reaction, also known as the combustion process, or pyrolysis. The vapor from heated fuel rises, mixes with air and burns. It produces enough heat to release more vapor and to draw in air to burn that vapor. As more vapor burns, flame production increases. More heat is produced, more vapor released, more air drawn into the flames and more vapor burns, the chain reaction keeps increasing and the size of the fire increases until the fuel is consumed. There are three things that are required for combustion process. Number one fuel. Referring to the combustible materials needed for burning. Sources of fuel include solid, liquid and gas fuels. Number two oxygen. Referring to an oxidizing agent. To be combined with fuel vapor. The air is a great source as it contains 28% oxygen. Number 3 heat. Referring to the temperature needed to reach ignition point. The combinations of these three elements form the so-called fire triangle. The fourth component is a chain reaction, which is referring to the chemical reaction and interaction between vapor, heat and oxygen. In a fire situation, the burning process is known as pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is the thermal decomposition of matter through the action of heat. In this case, the decomposition causes a change from a solid state to vapor state. If the vapor mixes sufficiently with air and heated to high temperature, combustion results. Fire tetrahedron is useful in illustrating the combustion process, because it has room for the chain reaction, and because each face touches the other three faces. The basic difference between the fire triangle and the fire tetrahedron is that, the tetrahedron illustrates how flaming combustion is supported and sustained through the chain reaction. In this sense, the chain reaction face keeps the other three faces from falling apart. It also explains the flaming mode of combustion. The flames as a product of fire can cause more intense heat, and this can lead to the dangerous behaviors of fire. One of the dangerous behavior of fire is backdraft. It is the sudden and rapid or violent burning of heated gases in a confined area that occurs in the form of explosion. This may occur because of improper ventilation. If a room is not properly ventilated, highly flammable vapors may be accumulated such that when a door or window is suddenly opened, the room violently sucks the oxygen from the outside and simultaneously, a sudden combustion occurs, which may happen as an explosion. A backdraft can occur when a compartment fire has little or no ventilation, leading to slowing of gas phase combustion, due to the lack of oxygen. The unburnt fuel vapor intermediates with hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide and smoke or particle matters. If oxygen is then reintroduced to the compartment, for example, by opening a door or window to a closed room, combustion will restart, often rapidly, 
as the gases are heated by the combustion and expand rapidly because of the rapidly increasing temperature. The color and movement of smoke is used by firefighters to infer fire conditions, including the risk of backdraft. Characteristic warning signs of a backdraft include yellow or brown smoke, smoke which exits small holes in puffs and is often found around the edges of doors and windows, and windows which appear brown or black when viewed from the exterior. These darker colors are caused by the presence of large amounts of particulate matter suspended in the air inside the room due to incomplete combustion. It is an indication that the room lacks enough oxygen to permit oxidation of the soot particles. Firefighters often look to see if there is soot on the inside of windows and in any cracks in the window caused, for example, by heat. The windows may also have a slight vibration due to varying pressure within the compartment due to intermittent combustion. A more dangerous behavior of fire that may occur before backdraft is flashover. It is also the sudden ignition of accumulated radical gases produced when there is incomplete combustion of fuels. The sudden burning of free radicals, which is initiated by a spark or flash produced when temperature rises until flash point is reached. When accumulated volume of radical gases suddenly burns, there will be a very intense fire that is capable of causing flames to jump at a certain distance in the form of fireball. Fireballs can travel to a hundred yards within a few seconds. Flashover by definition is the sudden involvement of a room or an area in flames from floor to ceiling caused by thermal radiation feedback. Thermal radiation feedback is the energy of the fire being radiated back to the contents of the room from the walls, floor, and ceiling. This radiation of energy to the contents of the room will raise all the contents to their ignition temperature. When the contents of the room suddenly and simultaneously ignite, this is flashover. This simply means that flashover is a temperature-driven condition as compared to brackdraft which is more smoke-driven. Flashover requires that the fire's energy be radiated back to the contents to produce a rapid rise in temperature and simultaneous ignition. Next, another dangerous behavior of fire is biteback. Biteback is a fatal condition that takes place when the fire resists extinguishment operations and becomes stronger and bigger instead. There are various group factors that affect fire behavior. This includes the type of fuel, its moisture content, the fuel load, fire-resistant treatment, the ventilation, geometry, and in forest fires, the wind direction, topography and meteorological conditions. Firefighting experiences of bite-back condition depends much on these factors or combination thereof. One can observe the violent behavior of fire, especially on the initial contact of water or other cooling agents during firefighting operations. This is due to the disturbance of intense heat by the cooling effect of water. Finally, we have flash fire. Flash fire is better known as dust explosion. This may happen when the metal post that is completely covered with dust is hit by lightning for instance. The dust particles covering the metal burn simultaneously thus creating a violent chemical reaction that produces a very bright flash followed by an explosion. A flash fire is a release of flammable vapor or liquid that vaporizes that premixes with air and expands, eventually igniting. Once ignition occurs, the burning velocity travels from the point of ignition toward the release point, potentially igniting the source as well. Since this ignites the entire volume of the vapor mixture, the volume of the flame is large and the majority of damage is due to flame impingement. Large-scale flash fires are particularly dangerous as they can cover a large area and, once ignited, occur quickly and have the potentially to ignite the flammable release source. When premixed flammable mixtures are confined to smaller scales, flash fires may become more violent, and even escalate to an explosion. There we go. The dangerous behavior of fire. Thank you for watching and listening. Kindly like us at Facebook and or subscribe at our YouTube channel for more educational videos. Visit and sign up also at our website www.criminologysolutions.com.